The next 25 years started with Waikato claiming more international scalps, knocking over Australia 26-24, and then defeating Fiji 13-7 two years later. But something new was on the horizon. The New Zealand Rugby Football Union announced that 1976 would see the start of the National Provincial Championship. Division 1 was made up of 11 teams, but Waikato wasn't one of them. They were placed in the North Island Second Division and would spend the rest of the decade battling to earn promotion. While they struggled to secure the jump nationally, they just kept knocking over international teams. In 1979, a feisty encounter with the French would result in an 18-15 win and a busy day for the St John Ambulance staff on duty. Thankfully, there were no TMOs back then. As the 80s decade starts, domestic success had continued to elude the Mulu men, but all that changed on the 7th of September, 1980. Stone, this is Twigden. That was intercept by Stone. The win was the pick-up the province needed to go to the next level. They would win the second division North Island title that same year and earn promotion to the first division. However, the light, the excitement, the joy that day at Eden Park brought the province would be the polar opposite to what would be felt 11 months later. There's an announcement coming. The game has been officially cancelled. The game has been cancelled. The game has been cancelled. The announcement has just been made and the game has been cancelled and it stirred up reaction in the crowd. There is obviously going to be trouble. The Springboks have left from under the stand. The police forming up down in front of the crowd and there is the chance that this crowd will now go over the fence. They're standing on the fence down in front of me, down to the left of our position. Police starting to run into position. One's come on, two, three, four. They're coming over the fence at the far end. The police there very quickly to take the individuals. If they went over en masse, there would be one of the ugly scenes of all times here at the Rugby Park in Hamilton. You see it. We did hear a report earlier stolen. We heard also that a bomb has exploded at Christchurch Airport. As you can hear in the background, they take the grandstand. The crowd refusing to go, chanting, we want rugby. I remember the day so well when Graham Thorne and I walked down in the morning to the ground at Rugby Park. The locals were cheering us on, expecting a Waikato win. It was a lovely day, but the mood changed when we got to the ground and saw the protesters pulling at the wire at the northern end and then rushing onto the field to huddle together, which we could clearly see from the commentary box at the halfway line. And then the protests started. And over the next couple of hours, as we all remember, there were demonstrations, anger at the police and at the rugby officials, and from the crowd towards the protesters. So at the end of the game, the media were also copying it. So when we were, came down off the ladder of the commentary box, uh, we had to have police escort to get out of the ground. But I'm a collector, so as I walked along with the policeman and Graham Thorne, I bent down and picked up some of the match day programs, thinking quickly that this would be a day to be remembered. And it was remembered, I think, for all the wrong reasons. 
but to celebrate for the right reason, I'd like to donate this to your function tonight. It's the program from the happiest day, I think, of Waikato Rugby. The day they beat the Springboks in June 1956 by 14 points to 10. I can remember listening to the game as a kid. So that's my contribution to your great celebration this weekend and for the great contribution that Waikato Rugby has made to the New Zealand rugby scene. Rugby would eventually return to a form of normality, but the tour would linger in the hearts and minds of many. Back on the field, Waikato would be relegated back into Division 2 at the end of the 1985 season. But the resilience in the group was great, and they would return to the top flight of the National Provincial Championship with a heart-stopping win over North Harbour. Waikato, five metres out. Humble. Oh, flicked away to Alice. The veteran Chris Alice gets the first try of the game. Now it's Waikato. The last chance may be Diabo. Elegant. Left wing free Thomas Simonson. Buddy up pace. Elegant. Alice. Diabo. On the 22 metre line. Carried on by Sawai from Waikato. Can they do it in the last couple of minutes? There it is for Humble. Bo. Diabo. Kawa. They must score here. Elegant. That's it. A last gasp cry by Daryl Halligan puts Waikato back in Division 1. Amazing scenes here at Rugby Park at Hamilton. 1987 would see New Zealand host the inaugural Rugby World Cup. Prop Richard Lowe was the only Waikato player in the victorious All Black squad. While Rugby Park would host the Pool 3 match between Fiji and Argentina, won by the Flying Fijians 28-9. No longer, he's in the clear, what a try! The next five seasons were a slow burn for Waikato, building nicely year on year. During that span, they would record wins over four international sides, Australia, Wales, Argentina and three wins over Canada. Come 1992, you just sensed that something special was brewing. The National Provincial Championship would have a new format, with round-robin play followed by semi-finals and finals introduced for the first time. Wakato made the top four, and their reward? A trip to Eden Park to take on the old enemy. And hauls him up again. He goes around the other side of the scrum, though, just to check on it over there. Richard Lowe, hold that ground. The Auckland Magic Machine by 27 points to 21. Waikato 27, Auckland 21. Waikato and not Auckland are through to the National Mutual Final next Sunday. That upset result over a team that had only lost once at that venue over a 10 year span meant Waikato secured hosting rights for the first ever NPC Grand Final. Their opponent would be Otago, who had beaten Waikato in round robin play. But that was in Dunedin. This game is being played on our turf. Monthly there once more. Now Craig. Gatlins. And Ian Foster. A oh, great try. But wherever a try was deserved today, it was to be scored by Ian Foster. A dominant performance by a dominant side, worthy champions. A year later, and the British and Irish Lions were touring New Zealand. Just four days prior to their visit to Hamilton, 
The Lions stunned the All Blacks 20-7 in Wellington to level the Test Series, reinvigorating their tour. They had confidence, they had belief, they had momentum. And Waikato incinerated that in a blistering display of rugby. A win over Auckland, a provincial title, and victory over the British and Irish Lions. So what was left for this Waikato side to achieve? Win the Ranfurly Shield, of course. To do that, they would have to beat Auckland, again. An Auckland side still smarting from what had happened to them 357 days earlier. Auckland said they were ready for whatever Waikato had. Truth be told, they had no idea what was about to hit them. Matthew Cooper starts the game. No, he doesn't. Unpredictability there from Waikato right at the start. Michael Jones close to the ball. Tanu'u and Howarth under extreme pressure from Matley. Waikato, a storming start. They've won it once more. A hand came through. Awkward time for Waikato. Foster the drop. Foster starts the scoring with a snap drop goal for Waikato. 3 0. Pressure time for Auckland. 12 metres out from the line. Foster. Foster. What a try! Ian Foster. He's the man of the moment for the challenges, Waikato. Seventeen to six, and it's all over. Waikato have won the Shell Ranfurly Shield by seventeen points to six. An outstanding coach, an extraordinary group of players, many of whom continue to leave their mark on rugby around the world and the Waikato community to this very day. As the province reaches its 75th birthday, it beats Scotland in an epic contest, takes the Ranfurly Shield off Taranaki, only to lose it to Auckland later that season, and emerge as a force in the sevens game, claiming the national title in 1996. That is also the year that the game went professional in New Zealand and Waikato was firmly part of it. The Mulus would form an odd amalgamation with North Harbour, the union from the north shore of Auckland, becoming the Super 12 franchise known as the Chiefs, based in Hamilton. They would finish sixth in the inaugural season, but it just didn't feel right to the very parochial rugby fans of this region. Just as it was in the very beginning, Waikato wanted to establish its own identity in the new professional era.